So the current update is right up here, Trove Geode, uh, and this introduces a new type of gameplay. So we talked about the adventuring and we talked about the building, but we realized one thing we were lacking is, you know, something that's more non-violent and more exploratory, right? We have, especially with like a younger, uh, the younger age demographic, they're looking for something that isn't always just killing, 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 right? I grew up with video games, I was like, yeah, you kill everything and get loot. Um, but, you know, we Trove wanted to be more than that, and so what we introduced with Geode is you go to this totally new planet uh, and the residents of the planet are under attack by the shadows but they're a peaceful um, peaceful race basically and so you're there to help them and what you have to do is the first step is go down into the caves and harvest resources to to prepare yourself for the battle ahead uh, and while you're down in the caves rather than killing the cr creatures that are down there you're helping them and so you'll run into critters that might be like cold or hungry or injured and you want to heal them and that's how you get rewards and so as part of that exploration, movement is really important to us. So we gave a new set of modules that we're seeing up here, uh, like a grappling hook, uh, rocket boots, this path painter. Um, and so it's about leveling up these modules, which allow you to get more freedom of movement and to go deeper and deeper into the caves uh, to harvest better resources uh, and continue the ex your exploration. Um, so one thing about Trove for people that aren't familiar with it is it's all procedurally generated. So when we're out in the world, every time you enter the world, there's something random and new, you know, it's never going to be the same. Uh, and the caves are very much the same way, which is they're set pieces that we've arranged procedurally, so it's a different cave system each time. And so Robin's found one of the creatures, and you can see he's like, ah, I'm he's so hungry. hungry. <laughs> So we'll throw some, some food to him. When he eats, he gets happy, he does a little dance, and gives you your reward. Um, and so really, there's a lot of that in Geode, which is again, just sort of this, you know, it's fun and a little goofy, but in this case, it's very much about the exploration and the helping. Um, and we've done a couple things when we did cave gameplays. We looked at other games with cave gameplay and sort of took what we thought were strong areas and tried to improve on what we thought were weaknesses. Um, and so one of those things is in some games you can dig through dirt and you can just keep digging forever in a direction and you may or may not find anything. Uh, what we've decided to do is we basically give you a path to go down that's lined with resources and there's some resources in the walls but eventually you cannot dig any further. And one of the modules we don't have on right now, do. oh you do, the thumb will show hidden stuff in the walls and like hidden crystals. So you saw those crystals pop up. Uh, that only appears if you have the thumper. Uh, and so again, just trying to find hidden stuff but not making you go dig too deep to find it. The other thing that we improved on is dead ends. And so you'll see a sign up here that's saying, oh, there's a dead end this way. First of all, we want players to know that because usually going to a dead end doesn't feel great. But for us, we made sure that if there's a dead end, there's always something special at the end. So in this case, you get this cool look, uh, you know, this just really cool looking thing. And there's a bunch more resources at every dead end. So we'll heal up this little yeah, guy and make sure he's happy. <laughs> So you can see all this ore in the wall is kind of all these different colored blocks. Those are all resources to go mine. And so knowing when you get to the dead end, you know, oh, there's going to be a bunch of this stuff here, either crystals or, or organic resources. Uh, so again, rather than make a dead end be a feel bad, we make it a reward. Um, are there any uh, quests in the game or is this completely free roam for exploring? That's a great question. So there are quests. You can choose to ignore them and go free reign and just explore if you want to. Um, and one thing we did with Geode is actually make the quest a little more prominent. Um, so there are quests throughout Trove, but when you arrive on Geode, there's actually a quest line that sort of introduces you to everything that's going on there. It helps you build your first set of modules and it introduces more lore. And so we've really, you know, previously, Trove didn't have a whole bunch of lore that we told the player outright. Geo does a better job of sort of giving you a story, which ties into how we're releasing it. So Geode is at live right now, um, and it's the first part of three. So there's actually going to be three Geode themed releases that each bring some new stuff, uh, and it's a story arc. So you've arrived on Geode in this update, uh, you're getting to know it, uh, understanding the situation, but you're not fighting yet. Um, Phase two, which is just the internal name, that's not the final name for it, um, but that's going to release later this year, and that's when you'll finally go out onto the surface of Geode and fight back against the shadows. So we're giving sort of this non-combat experience, but then for our players that are like, no, we like to go and, and you know do dungeons and, and destroy things, you'll be able to fight back in phase two. And that comes with just a ton of new stuff players have been asking for. So. There's, the way that we do difficulty in Trove is, we call it Uber levels, so there's Uber 1 through 9 right now, with 9 being the highest, so later this year we'll introduce Uber 10, so it's the most difficult combat we've ever had, 
we're doing a catch-up mechanic to help players who aren't up to Uber 8 yet get there faster so they can start enjoying this content. Um, there's a new gear type or a new um, tier of gear, I should say. So right now you can get gear up to what we call Stellar, that's last level, and we're introducing Crystal, so it's like, oh my gosh, all this new gear to collect, it's super powerful. Uh, and there's also a new type of gem, which is a big deal, because since we've introduced gems, there's only ever been blue, yellow, and red, and you've collected those. Well, there's gonna be a, a fourth color that's coming up, um, and so we're really excited about that. And then, once that releases later this year, early next year is going to have the, the finale of the Trove Geode sort of trilogy where uh, the story wraps up. And that's a big part of it, is that there is a story arc. You'll learn who you're fighting against, why you're fighting against them, and then eventually be able to sort of wrap up that story. Talking a bit about uh, child-friendly and the ports to the consoles, are there any plans maybe for the Nintendo Switch? So it, we're not unable to talk about like sort of our plans. Um, I think everybody, you know, wants the game on the Switch and talks about that on the Switch. So it's a thing that we're looking into, and that's basically all we can can say right now. But. Uh. May I ask a bit technical question? You said Absolutely. earlier uh, it's not uh, polygon based but voxel based. Uh, how is it working uh, with this kind of method uh, compared to polygon based things? Is it a bit difficult or is it, is it a completely different thing? It's very it's simple. a good question, yeah. Um, you know, in most polygon games we have textures, you need to do texture maps and whatnot. We're very simple, we have it's just basically one color. Um, we do have, you know, a pattern on a block, but it's nothing nearly compared, so it's actually very light. Yeah, Our game, I mean, it's, you can download it in, what, under five minutes? Yeah, it's, so it's, I, yeah. I was going to say, that's one of some big advantages that it gives us is, um, one, it's accessible, uh, two is that we can make stuff really fast for it. And so one of our strengths, I think, is that we're able to get so much content in the game so quickly, which allows us to listen to player feedback, because players will say, like, oh, I want this, and we'll kind of be like, Oh, that is cool, and like someone can make the asset, and there's a whole pipeline to get it into the game. But it's a lot quicker than, say, you know, like you said, a polygon-based game where sometimes modeling can take a, a really long amount of time. So it makes it. Uh, it's less of a stress, right? It, it makes it so we can get it on more platforms, that it takes less resources, and it allows us to build faster, which I, to me is the most awesome part. Because um, I've worked on polygon-based games before, and when I got on Trove, I was like, oh my gosh, we can make things so fast! <laughs> so I really enjoy that. I'm just exploring right now. <laughs> Alright, cool. We what should hop into to Bomber Royale. Okay. <laughs> I get very, uh... So real quick, more questions before I... Yeah, uh, just uh, about the uh, voxel-based thing. Um, how is it about the hardware? Is it very hardware-hungry thing? Or? Oh, no. In fact, that's the best part. Yeah, it's not really hardware-hungry. Um, and so Trove, it's the kind of game where we had made it for PC originally, but moving it to consoles, it was, I mean, it was a fair amount of work, but because it's, you know, a voxel-based game, it wasn't nearly as difficult as some games, um, like the trouble they would have in doing that. Um, and so we've been, we basically got it out of the consoles. We actually just released a small patch that a bunch of performance improvements, bug fixes, stuff like that, quality of life uh, things. And so uh, it's been really good. Yeah, it's nice because it does not tax the hardware too much. In fact, memory is more of an issue than CPU, generally, so. This is the new PvP Bomber Royale, and the queue is so fast that I didn't even have a chance <laughs> to jump around and explain kind of the starting uh, mechanics of it. Yeah, so we could. did we did PvP in Trove, uh, and we had PvP for a while, um, and it was okay. It wasn't great, and so we had set out with this came out in Geode for how do we improve PvP in Trove, and we ended up with what you're seeing now, which is called Bomber Royale. And I think people at first go, oh my gosh, another Battle Royale, right? Um, and it kind of is, but it's got Tro's spin on it, and it's really different. And so we set out for how do we build a fun experience that isn't super precise? Um, because, you know, a lot of games when you think PvP, it's like headshots, super precise action. Uh, but that's not what Trove excels at. Trove is about fun and destruction, right? Um, and so everyone's default weapon in this mode is a bouncing bomb. It will bounce once and then explode. So it's not very accurate, um, but it will blow up anything that it comes into contact with. And so sort of the, the Battle Royale part of it is that it's a free-for-all mode, and in normal Battle Royale, the game space gets smaller over time. You know, fog will come in or something, poison, so that you can't go outside. For us, we literally deconstruct the map. 
the map will just start falling apart and going away. Uh, so you have this combination of the map going away over time, along with the bombs that everyone's throwing blowing it up, so it's incredibly different every time, changes up, it's super fast, super fun. You know, a game is like seven minutes if you go to the end, and if you die quickly, you don't have to wait, you can just hop in another match. So we really kind of put it in as something that players, if they have like 10 minutes, they can hop in and play a couple matches. Um, and so what you're seeing here is that you start off with the, your weapons, but you also get pickups. Uh, so the whole idea is sort of you fall into the match, you want to get as many pickups as you can, uh, attack the other players and take them out and just try to survive for the time. Um, and we've been really happy, like people have been really, the reception of this has been really strong. We have a lot of players playing it. Um, you know, it's like a quarter to a third of our players play Bomber Royale at least once during their session. So it's been really cool to watch people play this. Um, I think the most important part is there's, the skill matters, so if you're good, you're gonna succeed more often, but there's enough randomness and a low enough barrier to entry that even if you're not a great player, you have a chance of winning, right? You can get a really good position, get some good power-ups, uh, and find yourself able to win, so. We've, there's 20 players in a match, and so Robin is, we got 10 people left in this one, so we'll see. You can see the map falling apart over time. Oh, you jinxed me. <laughs> I did jinx you. The, <laughs> <stations>. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing is we have spectate mode. Yay! So you can watch, so you can watch other people win. <laughs> Oh, he's not winning. Let's not watch him. <laughs> so, a couple things. So, with the grappling hook, so movement is really important. So, Bomber Royale has a grappling hook in it. Everyone has that by default, so that's a fun way to move around. There's also a power-up you get that's a bomb jump. So, the grappling hook is also in the caves that we saw earlier. So, you're sort of, kind of, either way you're playing, you're getting used to the grappling hook, but you don't have it out in the adventure world. Um, we could show this after this match, but in the adventure world, we do movement very much through freedom of movement. Like, jump is a big thing for us. Like, it's an actual stat on gear, is you can get plus jump. So, you know, most games have either a jump or double jump. We, you can get like, in Trove, like 70 jump. And you can just jump, 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 up way high up in the air. And then you have, you know, the wings and the dragons and the mounts that you can then glide around on. So really, what you end up doing in Trove, sort of, is you go out into Adventure World, you jump super high, find a dungeon, fly to it, bomb open the top, kill the boss inside, uh, and then move on. And it's really about, like, doing things quickly and fast. And that's sort of throughout the entire game, whether it's the cave exploration, Bomber Royale, or the adventuring. It's about getting crazy movement and trying to be as fast as you can. Oh my lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, and so you can see how this gets pretty crazy oh, man. Uh, over time. Robin, you can do it. I'm not it. that good. <laughs> He's really good. He was on a winning streak. Oh, see. Um, but again, once we're done, game. then we can just hop right out. So, um, Are the blocks uh, destroyed just by the players or is it uh, dynamically by the map design? So it's both on that. So the outside actually over time will go in and it's semi-random so it's not always the same way but yes, it will. The, the game itself will destroy the blocks and then yeah, the players of course are destroying it as well. So every time it's, it's like completely different, you know. Sometimes you're like, oh this position is really good, I'm gonna go here next time. But next time it might be totally blown up, so. Or everybody thinks that and everybody comes all at once in one spot and it's just like this chaotic little rat's nest. Um, so Robin so will show off the jumps too. Here? Just show off the jumps and gliding too. So you can jump super high into the air <laughs> and then uh, and then you have wings so you can glide around. Uh, and of course you can collect different types of wings, right? Like we're showing off some of the basic ones but there's rainbow yeah. wings and butterfly wings and all sorts of wings. What are you gonna show like off? Oh, ladybug, ladybug wings? Ladybug wings, because they flutter. Well, you're oh, on your... There you go. Yeah. You could do it on your mouth there. So, ladybug wings. Um, so, again, we really embrace trying to, you know, the cute, fun aspect of, uh, of collecting stuff. I'm a bit overwhelmed how much fun it is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So one thing that's that to call out on that too is that it can feel overwhelming like oh there's so much stuff right it's easy to get into and the cool part is you could just kind of play the way you want to play so if you wanted to do like let's say you watched that and you saw Bomber Royale and you're like oh that's what I want to do when you start the tutorial it will literally say like do you want to go adventure or go play Bomber Royale and so you could just jump right in you don't have to like level up or anything like that um, and then if you want to go adventure you could just do that right away or if you saw the cave gameplay and you're like oh I just I don't really want to go out in the world and kill things but I want to do the caves you can go there right away as a new player too so we just sort of let you play the way you want to play so she's fighting a big chocolate dragon very right powerful, now so I don't want to kill him yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And so yeah, you know, chocolate dragons, why not? <laughs> um, you said also you are on Steam, on consoles, uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox right now. Yep. Just a little question about, do you got any achievements in the game? Yes. For Yes, so we do have achievements. Uh, achievements on all the platforms. There's Steam achievements, Xbox, and PlayStation. Uh, and yeah, you can get them you know, for all the different stuff in the game. There's a bunch of achievements to get. So, And with new expansions, we do new achievements as well. So Trove Geo brought some new achievements. So. Das war Trof mit dem neuen Update. Guckt es euch an. Macht sau viel Spaß auf Steam, PlayStation 4 und Xbox One. Wir sehen uns beim nächsten Video. Bis später.